Well, hello. Hello. Jessie over here with Bells and Gals, and I have the absolute pleasure of meeting Mairead. How are you doing, Mairead? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course, lovely to meet you, lovely to meet you. Just a, a good old chat and a bit of a get to know you. That's what this is all about today. So, Mairead, tell us all about yourself. Oh, gosh. Oh, where are we going? Going on? I know you're from County Tyrone. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So I'm from a town called Cookstown in County Tyrone um, in Northern Ireland. Um, I moved to England like seven or so years ago now. Um, and I love it over here. And pursuing my music, um, I'm a country pop singer, songwriter. Um, and yeah, I've been releasing music over the last few years on the UK country scene. You certainly have. How's that been for you? What was your, how was your first release? How did that go for you? And, 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 and actually, before we go to your first release, let, let's go a little bit further back. Let's go to, you know, influences, you know, where country, how did this come about? What, what, what sort of style of music? Um, obviously, yeah. uh, growing up in Ireland, you would have that folk um, element, yeah. which, you do, which you do have to your style anyway. So how did that all come yeah. about? So I've always, yeah, you're right. Like, so I've always been into country music. Um, in Ireland, it's definitely a lot more like traditional country folk music that I would have listened to when I was younger. So like Christy Moore, Mary Black, um, Cara Dillon, um, all those like folk country singers. Um, I really love, I do love folk music as well. Um, and always listen to that. And then I've just, I mean, I'm such a fan of, you know, the big, the big belters. So like Leanne Rhymes, Carrie Underwood, Faith Hill are like big influences of mine. I think when I first saw, what's that film called now? Um, Can't Fight the Moonlight. You knew that song? Um, oh, yeah. Can't yeah. 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 And then like all of those types of things just always really, really inspired me. And um, all of those artists like songwriting and getting into that. I used to always, when I was younger, I used to write poems all the time and then try to turn them into songs yeah. um, and make my family listen to me. Um, but yeah, I think I just always really influenced by country music. It's what I've listened to. Um, and then I suppose more Amer Americana music yeah. um, and more of the American country artists kind of got me into thinking about going down that route for myself. Um, and I enjoy writing that style of music. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of how I got into it and how I've been influenced. But yeah, I love, I love, love like the Highway Women and yeah. Miranda Lambert and all the gals. Fierce, they're fierce. They've got lots to say and they've finally got a platform in which to say it. Okay. Um, in terms of your own music, so when you say, you know, you love that style of writing, what type of writing? Because, you know, we talk so much about country music being um, storytelling, um, you know, and, and being something that you can resonate with mm -hmm. um what 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 do you think your style is so i would say like country pop i would say would definitely mm -hmm. be my style and the reason that i'd kind of say that is that i tend to i like writing things that are quite hooky so i love i love a good hook like i just love something that keeps that momentum going i love pop music as well so i like i think that influences my music although my underlying style is always country and I like to write a story so like when I write I'll sit down and draw out like what basically looks like a tv screen and okay. like brainstorm like how will this look what is what would the music video be like like what is the story like? and that kind of like helps me yeah. write that's really interesting I've never heard of that that <laughs> I've never heard of that way of brainstorming it and create the creative the creative process that's quite interesting so for you it's a little bit more visual yeah, kind of like visual. So like, mm. you know, where is this person at when they're experiencing this? What does that look like? What like what are all the words? Like, what are they feeling? What are the key words? How do I get that in there? Mm. What's the next part of the story? So like the story. Um, and I've had some, I've had some really good. I've learned a lot from writing over the last three or four years more professionally. Um, and I've had a lot of really good writes with other artists and and songwriters who are you know just do songwriting in their own right um, and I'm really I've really learned a lot from other people I think um, and I, I love going into rights with other people and like 
seeing how they all do it and then combining how I do it and then coming up with something that, um, coming up with a new concept. So yeah, I think, I actually think that I learned that style. I mean, that so you take different elements every time you write with somebody. I think I like learned that style from somebody like a songwriter one of the first times that I wrote and it's just really stuck with me. And another one that a songwriter I worked with, Eve, back in Bangor, Northern Ireland, I remember her, she really talked to me a lot about imagery and placement in songs. So being able to say something without saying it. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. It's about being very clever with words. Yeah, like when you listen to your song, almost thinking that you've, almost thinking that the writer has said something. Mm. And then when you look at the lyrics, they actually haven't, but they've they've helped you get there with kind of the way that they frame yeah, it. It's, yeah, it's like it's like leaving the breadcrumbs, isn't it? It's yeah. it, and it's letting the the listener create their own imaginative process and yeah. you're leading them there, but you're not necessarily yeah. directing them exactly where to go. It's really, yeah. really I think it's like leaving it open as well for like other people's interpretation and like what is meaningful for them so that it, you know, can apply to like a wider um, audience of people and they can take that song and it means something more personal for them so I quite, um, I quite like leaving it in that way certainly absolutely um I mean it, you're talking about collabing I mean I know the the song that you sang with uh, Johnny Brady I mean that for me uh, that's one of the first uh tracks that I ever played um of yours on the radio and then I was just thought how touching it was and how beautifully written performed and and you really complimented each other so what other artists have you had the pleasure of of working with uh, thank you thank you so much for playing if you love me once um so yeah i i really do love that song and um i'm, I'm glad that it's i'm glad that it got out there in front of people really um mm. i've i've written with loads of people now i mean sorry something this is like live faux pas. Something's came up, popped up on my screen, so I couldn't see you. Um, so in terms of who I've written with, um, I've written with a lot of like UK country artists yes. that, um, you know, from Liv Austin to Emily Faye to Katie Ray, who's a, song, um, who's a songwriter in her own right, um, with some of the male artists. So I've written with Jake Morrell. We've written a really cool song that- Well, oh, Jake's so cool. He's amazing, so I'm hoping to um, maybe record that one next year. Ah, exciting. And that's exciting. Um, I, I've loved every write. I don't think I've written with one person that I came away and felt that didn't, I didn't, don't think we got something there. I've, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed writing with all of the artists on the scene. It's it's such actually, I think the more that you work in the scene, the more you realise how like small it is. Oh, it's very <laughs> small. I know each other. Oh, yeah, the UK country scene is, well, I say small. I mean, it was small. It's certainly growing, yeah. but it's a community. It's it's a bit yeah. of a family. Um, we fight like family, and we love like family. Right. <laughs> right. That's the truth of it. But um, yeah, th there is there is very much um, room for artists such as as yourself. You know, mm -hmm. to, to have that scope to create. We we don't have enough of it. You know, there there are like mm -hmm. I said, a lot of artists emerging. Yeah. But um, but it's it's really important to see, and especially that you do have that traditional flavour. I think that's still very evident in your music. So how did your yeah. journey start, really, Maureen? How did that come about? When did you decide to say, right, I'm going to make a go of this? Yeah. So I mean, I've sang at weddings and things since I was younger. So I've yeah. always I've always written. I've always sang since I was really young. I did lessons. I did all the usual kind of stuff. And yeah. in Ireland, I went to in Ireland we do like feshes and flas. They call them so that you there are constant competitions for music across all genres. Right. Um, so, I mean, I've done that my whole life. Um, and then when I moved to England, I was kind of, I was actually looking for a guitarist um, for weddings. Um, I, knew, I knew I wanted to do the country music thing. It would have probably been a bit easier maybe for me to do it in Ireland. Not easier, but I, I, I knew more people. I had more contacts and... I was kind of thinking about doing it there um, and then yeah I've actually met Simon James um, who is a UK male country singer yep. and Simon said I've listened to your videos I know you're looking for a guitarist but I think that you need to do country music on the UK scene like I really think that like there's a place for you on the yeah. 
on the yeah. same side, I really, really like your voice and your music. And actually, like, I have to give Simon his views on that one. He, like, actually quite inspired me. And then he said, do you write? And I said, yeah, I do. And mm -hmm. I, like, shared with him all the songs that I had written. He was like, oh, my God, I love them. Come to my house. Meet my family. So I got, like, my boyfriend and I got the tree and the whole way up. Can't remember where he lives now. Somewhere, like, far away from where I was, like, four hours away. And he met us at the train station and we stayed with his him and his family for the weekend. And... Oh. Um, we recorded videos, um, I played him all my songs, um, we got like my social media set up, and he really helped me get started on the scene actually. Sometimes you meet an angel along the way, don't you? Yeah, and he like then pushed me to like finish all the other songs that I was working on and didn't like take over mm. that, and just really, yeah, just really supported me. And then since then, and everything kind of really then happened really quickly, that just gave me the confidence and then not long after I started releasing music and performing um, in London. And actually Nick from Bells and Gals helped me out a lot as well. He did um, and helped a lot of artists. Uh, really yeah, really helped me out. Like said he liked my music and has helped, yeah, just really helped encourage me to keep going along the way. Sure, sure. And how, how are your performances going? Up until the dreaded lockdown, obviously it's had a huge impact on so yeah. many artists. You know, good and bad, good and bad. You know, we, yeah. we can't write it off completely. It has been yeah. an incredibly creative time. However, um, what was your run up to that? How, how was that going? Because I know you were doing live gigs. You were out and about. Out and about, yeah. About? Gosh, weird. Um, yes, gosh. So I recently did like one of my first live gigs, obviously, of the year. I think my last one was either in January or February before that. It's been really hard to be honest. Like I actually had a really long conversation with someone about this today. I had um I met with my singing coach today. Oh right. And um we had a lesson and that was that was really good. But we were just talking about like the pressure on artists right now. Um because yeah, you know, yeah. like you haven't performed in seven months, maybe. And then yeah. the next thing, and you're so excited to get back out there, but it's not it was amazing. Like I did a recent gig with um, Lucy Blue and Shannon Hines. We've kind of I know the ladies. It looked awesome. I was gutted. It was so, so fun. Um, to to yeah, the Isles. We call ourselves us three ladies. Um, people were like, "What does that mean?" But it's because we're all from different parts of the Isles. Yes, so you are. You yeah. might have got that anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's just weird, like that long gap in performing. And then you can't really rehearse properly with your, you know, with your band mm. um, and then kind of like getting back into it. So you kind of have to, I think a lot of us are really hard on ourselves right now. You know, you're maybe not as comfortable with playing as maybe you were six, seven months ago. Um, and it's weird that you might be looking down at an audience that are wearing masks. So that's, that's a bit strange. Um, Actually, it's really interesting that you talk about it, Marie, because not many people have. And and from, from the aspect and the perspective of a performer, this is very, very different. The mm -hmm. atmosphere is different. The feeling is different. The visuals are different. Yeah. Um, it's not as we remember it. Yeah. Uh, we are having to make do with what we can get. And I know yeah. that, that, that you know we need to be grateful, and I get that. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's interesting for you to, to to speak about this because this is something that I think could have an impact on on many other artists yeah. as well. For them to realise that it isn't just like getting back in the saddle. Not really. I mean, yeah, you're performers and, and you know how to perform. You know what you're doing, but yeah. but you're performing in a very different capacity. Yeah, and I think like the gig that we did recently, actually, the Sound Lounge did such an amazing job. Like there, there. I mean, Hannah. And Kieran there and they're amazing at supporting artists and I mean they had it set up so well so for a first gig back that was so incredible to play although like my I think my set was half an hour 35 minutes and I because I hadn't performed in so long I felt like I was on stage for maybe two and a half minutes and I was like end of the set oh, no. right you just got into it and then you had to come off I, was like, I can't believe I had to get off the stage yeah. and I think I said to the audience I feel like I've been on here for like two minutes did anyone else think I'm that not yet. <laughs> I don't want to go um but thankfully we did I did get to go back up on stage because we had some um songs the three of us all together well oh, beautiful you know, that's that had been something we'd been talking about for a long time that we wanted to do the show together. And we did have to change the show a bit. Um, there was supposed to be a lot more 
uh, collaboration on stage. So we we had hoped to sing a lot more together, but due to numbers that you're allowed on the stage at the minute. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, obviously affects things. Um, but it was, it was amazing to be back. I just want to be playing all the time again. I just want to get back out there and start, you know, start playing live. But I've done loads of okay. streams, streams over lockdown. Um, and that's actually been really good. I've actually, I've met more fans that maybe wouldn't have, you know, found my music. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You do end up, it has done that, hasn't it? It has um, given a whole different level of opportunity to people. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I've met more people and, you know, met other artists as well, you know, because I do writer's rounds, but I don't do them all the time, whereas I've done a lot of the streams online have been writer's rounds. So I've like, got other music and got to enjoy other other new songs that people have been writing in lockdown and stuff. So there's been lots of, like, highs and lows, I suppose, with it. There has, there has. I understand that. And, uh, you know, that. There are definitely some bonuses and some good points to it. Certainly meeting yeah. new people, having the opportunity and the time, so much time, um, yeah. uh, to be able to listen to other artists and interact with other artists yeah. and to collab, like you say. Would yeah. you have necessarily been able to do that with the girls? I mean, obviously, we're all on the same scene and you would have spoken with them, but it actually did give you that that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. it's been really good. And, I've, you know, sometimes, like, when we're writing and performing, we all sometimes have wanted to write with artists and we've not been able to make our diaries work. And actually yeah. we've been writing on Zoom and we've been like, oh yeah, want to write tomorrow? Okay, I'm free, like, let's do that. Um, so that's, you know, that's actually been really cool. That's um, amazing, isn't it? Like, yeah. that would have been months and months of waiting and arranging yeah. and scheduling and everything else. And then suddenly it's the doable, next. it's doable. It makes it doable. Like you don't. I mean, there you cannot beat being in a in a room writing with somebody like vibing off. Like you, it's so weird. Yeah. Like, you really realize how much like energy is in a room when. Oh yes, when you're physically in there as opposed to doing a Zoom. Even when you're, even yeah. when you're drinking with your friends, you know, and getting drunk with them, it's not the same as giving That's them a hug and then, you it's know, singing a song together. <laughs> When you've met somebody already, so a lot of like the, a lot of people that I wrote with in lockdown had already maybe written with, so it wasn't so bad on Zoom. Sure, but or maybe I know someone for the first time, maybe like um, for a writing session. But but it's been really that it's been fine. I just hope we're coming out the other side. Oh well, let's hope. Let's hope because we need the music and we need the artists and we need we need we need more of this. This is, you know, this is what we're talking about with the arts. It's this that's kept us going. It's you guys that have kept everyone going, really. How we would have got through lockdown without the arts and the creativity and the music and you know the live feeds. It's it's been yeah. imperative, really imperative. How have you found um, performing on the live feeds? Um, have you found that your music has done better over this time as well? I think that people, I do think that some, I find that my music has maybe reached people it wouldn't have before. Yeah. 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 I suppose that's a really good question. I, I think that it has, like, I definitely find people through the live streams, like people have messaged me and said, like, I wouldn't have found you before only because of this live stream yeah. and I'm glad that I have and, you know, I'm enjoying your music now. So that, I mean, like, that's been a real plus in one sense. So yeah, I think so. Definitely good things. Definitely good things. What's in the future for you? So I know that you're 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 getting a bit of a high women uh, collab or oh, band essentially with the ladies, and I, I really hope so because you know what, there's a need for that. So do it. That would be awesome. And you're 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 all, you all bring something quite different actually. Yeah. So I think that that could really really work. But you yourself. Um, what is in the pipeline for you? What, what are we to expect? Ooh, so I have a new single coming out. Uh, so I'm really excited to get it out there. Um, so I've got a new song, Crying on the Dance Floor. Um, that is coming out on Friday the 13th, which is a strange day that <laughs> like a single. <laughs> so Friday the 13th. Um, so that's coming out that. Um, and then I'm doing a single launch event for that at the Water Rats. Um, lovely um on that on that night so fingers crossed if that can go ahead um yeah i'll be really happy but i'm so excited for this song to come out um 
I wanted to get it out. It was supposed to come out earlier this year, but we couldn't get everything together because of course. And are you looking at an EP or an album or anything else to come, hopefully? Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> possibly, possibly next year. Um, I may or may not have another single that might come out this year. Maybe. Um, okay. At the minute, I'm putting out singles and kind of feeling what uh, the audience want, what people want to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I do have a bit of a thread of music that might might come out next year. All do well, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this song to come out. I wrote it um, with Kiri Ray, who has actually produced it as well. Right. So we wrote it together, and then I really wanted her to produce it. Um, it's probably more slightly more country pop than my last track, um, which was I would say like more country Americana kind of. Was yeah. Irish yeah. and Hannah, I kind of penned my yeah. last <laughs> word. It sure works. Yeah. Um, or it's like, really. this song is definitely a bit more country pop, and I really like it, and I like the direction of it, and I hope that other people do as well. But I've That's still cool. kind of got that thread, I feel, of um, my roots as well, still coming through. I think it's really important to stick to your roots. I think, you know, that's what makes you certainly unique. That's what makes you sound like you. Um, you're known for that. You do have that element to your, vo your voice for certain. I think we know it's you singing for sure. That's what makes you really, really mm -hmm. unique, really special. Um, so we'll really look forward to that. So the exciting things to come, certainly. Thank you. Um, yeah, can't wait, can't wait to get it out there. We've got two tables left at the gig. So we've got a table of three and a table of two left, and then we will be sold out. So that's really exciting. Okay. I think people have been like, oh, my gosh, I'll get me to a gig. <laughs> no, <laughs> Absolutely, you can do when it's someone's living room. The living room will be happy, you know that that'll do. It, it's, <laughs> but but it's really special that you're actually going to get out there and people are going to have the opportunity to hear the new single, especially at launch time as well. That's that's really lovely. I really hope that. Um, across that all goes ahead for you. Thank you. <laughs> really I really appreciate you having me. Not at all. It's been really, really lovely to talk to you. I wish you all the best and all the successes. And I'll certainly be playing you. You know that for sure. But um, yes, we'll look forward to chatting with you soon and more news to come. Thank you. Amazing. Nice to meet you. Nice to you, darling. Lovely to meet you. My radio. Take care. See you soon. Thank you. Bye, darling.